Hey, one. Hey, one. Hey, one. Yeah. Truly. Cooler and a flyer to jam. Welcome everybody. Welcome back to the show that's cool and fly to A1 Forever Sports. I am he, Chris Tipmore. Why settle for less we can have more with the vision? That's why we brought on Coach Mike Westmoreland of the Creekside High School Seminoles to have on some NFL breakdown, cover a little bit of NFL news, talk about, you know, a few NFL games that's happened so far this season and get his thoughts. So uh, welcome back, Coach. Uh, go ahead and reintroduce yourself, man, to the viewers. Hey, how y'all doing? Uh, my name is Michael Westmoreland. I am currently the offensive line coach at Crickside High School. My head football coach is Maurice Dixon. My assistant head football coach is Rance McCrary. Um, my offense coordinator is uh, Trent Francis. And uh, right now we're right in the state and um, we've got a few wins under our building. Uh, we're in a bye week, so this is a great opportunity to talk some football with my favorite show, A1 Sports. Oh, yeah, man. Well, thank you for uh, coming aboard, man. Happy to have you on, as always. So, man, let's just um, uh, jump into it. Well, first of all, um, how's the how's uh, the Seminoles doing this year, man? Oh, uh, we're, 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 we're okay. We're doing okay. <laughs> Um, for okay. us, it's, uh, you know, for us, we, we just really harp on being in the moment. Um, this week is an important week for us. Mm -hmm. um, even though it's a bye week, um, we're never off. We're always on. Um, we just, we're trying to make sure we cross our I's and dot our T's, <laughs> you know. So we're trying to do the little things right. So that's right. where we're at right now. Um, we're ranked in the state. Um we got uh, two losses and a few wins, and we're just trying to keep, you know, going in the right direction. Yeah, I definitely understand that. Definitely understand that, you know, it's always a challenge trying to raise the young pups up into uh, grown men so they can go make a few dollars and give back and all that good stuff. But, um, okay, so i uh, going to bring up a couple of games here. We're going to start with week one. I know um, we had a few games we wanted to see and talk about before last time I had you on, but week one, how does that uh, Bills and Rams game, uh, how did that one please you? Um, I'm a Ravens fan. I got to be on record to say that. Go flop, mm -hmm. nation, um, big trust. Um, I was pulling for uh, the Rams. Um but the Bills, like, they really did a good job. I don't know what the issue is with the Rams right now. Like, they spent a lot of money on cornerback and linebacker and defensive line, and they're not getting stops like they did kind of last year. Um, people are actually going after uh, their all-pro cornerback. Mm -hmm. They're um, getting time to throw versus Aaron Donald. And uh, – it's, it's uh, one of those situations. Our Bills are a legit team. They're a good team. Um, I think their development, it's a long season, so, you know, it's going to be ups and downs. But that, that was a big win for them going against um, last year's Super Bowl champion. Um, hopefully the Rams don't have a Super Bowl hangover. Uh, Man, I'm going to be real with you, Coach. I believe that's exactly what's going on with the Rams. I know – now, don't get me wrong. Let's not overlook the fact that uh, what Stafford had a little procedure done in the offseason about his elbow or something like that, or he's got like some something, something going on with his elbow. So I, and as a quarterback, I mean, you know that dealing with quarterbacks and everything, if, if that elbow ain't right, you know that you know you can't be you can't really launch the ball like that. You can't get it downfield. I guess you're kind of gonna be doing the check downs and all that good stuff like that. So okay, and then also. Uh, you know about this as well. You know more hands on about this. That offensive line losing Wentworth. Yeah, uh, uh, that's, a big, that's a big loss. That's that was a, big a loss. huge loss. Um, having you can't just that's have blind side. Yeah. Yes, it is. You can't have anybody just step in those shoes, um, especially coming off the Super Bowl. You're not picking high. Um, you spent yeah. a lot of money in other situations and other positions, so you really can't get. Um, a high value left tackle. Um, you lost Von Miller. Lost Von Miller. So you've lost a lot. 
you, you know, don't know what you don't know if you're ever going to get Odell back. You tried to get Allen Robinson, who's been a non-factor. Yeah. To, be, to be honest with you, I'm going to be completely honest with you. It was talks about Jarvis Land. Like, OK, now this is going back to that Deshaun Watson situation for my Atlanta Falcons. It was talks about Allen Robinson taking a huge pay cut to come down here if. You know, so it was rumors, of course, you know, stories and stuff like that about him and Jarvis Landry taking huge pay cuts to come down here if we was to hit, get Deshaun Watson. And when I first heard Allen Robinson's name, I was, I, me personally, I was thinking, well, Allen Robinson hadn't been the same really since Jacksonville. <laughs> I mean, okay, Chicago, I know really didn't, didn't give him too much and everything too, but even so, you know, a good receiver is a good receiver, no matter how bad the quarterback is. Like some kind of way, he's gonna catch some highlights to where you be like, you know what, he's still good. You know, so. But I just don't feel like you know the last two seasons, Allen Robinson was able to give that or showed any kind of flashes. Like, oh yeah, I'm still that dude. But it's hard um, with receivers and quarterback play, especially in the NFL. Uh, you paying a lot of money to the offensive coordinator or you're paying a lot of money to your uh, head coach and your quarterback to get and be able to develop a plan for a receiver. Um, right. The great Jerry Rice Hall of Famer had a plan um, with the San Francisco 49ers. And right. They allowed him to highlight what he's great at. Um, you have to be able to have a plan and be able to man manipulate coverages and get people open by scheme and design. Um, even when wide receivers go through, you know, those moments where they're not getting the ball because they're divas. They want the football. They want to score. They think they're the best. So you have to be able to get through those humps and those dry spells with them. But uh, you're right. He's been struggling. Yeah, man, definitely a struggle. Um, and just talking about just the Rams again, um, about hangovers it, it may be a part of that but it may be something deeper going on because just like you said they're not stopping anybody even with you know Bobby Wagner and you know additions like that to the team and you know a Cooper Cup I believe what it is about Cooper Cup he is that good on offense I think he is you know but at the same time you know because he's on pace for like 179 receptions or anything like that but he can't be the only guy. And I think that's what it is, too. I think he's the only guy. And I think it's some it's something, something ill, something ill will on that defensive line. And uh, I don't know if maybe they're just, you know, happy that they got a ring now. It just they don't seem like they're the same, have the same tenacity or anything as well, because shoot, they almost uh Really, they almost gave up in a 25. Well, they did give up a 25 point lead, but they just didn't end up losing the game to the Atlanta Falcons a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. You know, and you know, a team that supposedly supposed to go two and 15 and everything, you know, what do they know? You got to go out there and play the game. Mm -hmm. But for the Super Bowl champions to be up 28 to three in the third quarter and the final score to be 25 31. You know, you almost you almost let that one go, too. So yeah. I don't know what's going on with the Rams, but I'm about to move on uh, to this next game. I definitely want to ask you about Mr. Flock, uh, yeah. the Miami Dolphins and the Baltimore Ravens. Um, That was a good game. It was a good football game. It was. It was um, very good football. My game. hat goes off to Tua, um, his ability to just keep competing and keep going and not look up at the scoreboard. And, you know, he just kept 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 his team in it and kept going. And that second half, you know, uh, we just let it – the Ravens let it go. Um, we didn't get stops. I think, you know, and I'm going to speak personally as a Ravens fan, this is not the same Baltimore Ravens that we've accustomed ourselves to just looking at. Ray Lewis is retired. Um Ed Reed is retired. They're in the Hall of Fame. Terrell Sucks is not coming back. The rest of the passing for us. Haloti Nada is not coming back. 
those guys are gone. So mm. this is a brand new generation of Ravens, but we still have the same standard of when we get the ball to the defense, the defense got to end the game for us. And it's just not happening. Mm -hmm. um, we're struggling with pass rushing right now. We're not affecting the quarterback as much as we normally would have. Um, we spent a lot of money in our secondary and put draft picks into the secondary. And right now, like, we're not getting crucial stops. And, you know, um, it's hard to cover the cheetah, though. I think uh, our all-pro cornerback, uh, Marlon Humphreys, wasn't even on the field. He had some uh, situations where he wasn't even on the field in the second half. And we had a rookie uh, covering the cheetah. And that's just a that's asking for it. That's actually, like, it's hard for some of the all-pro guys to cover that uh, number 10 in Miami. Mm -hmm. But you ask a rookie to do it, Unless you, the second coming of Deion Sanders, it's going to be hard for you to cover uh, somebody like that. So, you know, we gave up that lead. Um, we just are not playing complimentary football right now. Um, the defense and offense are not in sync. Our special teams are not in sync. And uh, we gave up that big lead. I think yeah. the Dolphins are a good football team. They are a good football team. So, yeah. Um, it's it's been a problem though, man, because you know the Dolphins isn't the first team y'all don't give up a lead to already. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been an issue. Been an issue. Yeah, even if you wanted to talk about the Buffalo Bills, and I've never seen so many Buffalo Bill fans in my life come oh, out. Yeah, the they've come out the woodwork. I'm sure when they win, they come out the woodworks, and I have to remind the Buffalo Bill fans that you have four conference championships. We have two Super Bowls. We are not the same. So just humble yourself a little bit. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that Buffalo Bills game, I put it on coaching a little bit because, you know, you get – and speaking as a football coach, and I'm not an NFL football coach, so I get paid a lot less than they do. Um, you get in the emotions of the game, and you just – you believe in your team – you believe in the guys and you be like, we can go for it and we can, you know, execute at a high level to get what we want. We can score. Um, my issue with that loss to the Buffalo Bills was we have Justin Tucker. Mm -hmm. He's one of the greatest kickers in the history of football. He's clutch. We just pay him an extension. He's standing on the sideline and we lost by three points. Worst case scenario, we kicked it field goal, they kick the field goal, we're going to overtime. You know, but uh giving giving your defense nothing to defend, like you gave the it was not a bad situation. They was on like I believe the three yard line they had to drive to get a field goal. Mm -hmm. But still this is not the same Baltimore Raven defense. As Raven fans we've been spoiled because we've had a great defense historically for a very long time. Um, and it's right now, it's just not that way. Um, I think it's fixable. Um, I think we got to, like, we're in a good situation because it's early in the season and we have a long season ahead of us. And I think we can fix it and get it up. Uh, because I believe in the coaching staff, I believe in the defense, um, I believe in everybody we got. We uh, signed a good safety, we drafted another safety, we got two good corners. So we just, you know, we got to just go through the rough patch. There's no team other than one team in the history of the NFL that have been undefeated. So you just you got to stack these wins and address these issues early on. Um, I would hope that we get Justin Tucker involved in in-game situations. We got to be able to kick field goals. If we got to kick field goals to win games and then hand it to the defense, I think that would be great. Right, right. But we should not let a million dollar kicker sit on the sideline and not make you know his uh weight and go, not pull his part of the weight because he's worth it. Don't I, it would be the worst thing ever to just sit him out there for these insane field goals where it's 60 some yard field goals and not give him a shot when it's a 20 yard field goal. Mm -hmm. I just thought that just made me think about something, man. I know uh, I was going to jump into this particular game here, but I want to change gears a little bit. And uh, I want to talk about 
the Super Bowl rematch, uh, man, the Brady versus Mahomes, man, like the Tampa Bay versus Kansas City, you know, two totally different teams from the Super Bowl a few years ago, you know, similar faces, but still two totally different teams. Did that game there go according to what maybe you your thoughts of how the, how the game there went or did you were you surprised just maybe like like I was I was surprised that the, the score went like that I wasn't surprised um I know Temple Bay is dealing with some injury issues mm-hmm. uh, basically like everybody else in the NFL, they're dealing with some injury issues and you know um Tom Brady as great as he is um he's human Right. You can only overcome so much. Um, so, you know, he's dealing with the things they got to deal with in Tampa. But I knew. And, with, that, and his personal business, too. Yeah. I You know, but he's a professional. And with yeah. professionals, they are able to, the great ones are always able to separate business from profession. So he's able to, like, go in that place that few people mentally can reach to where nothing else matters but this moment and this game. Um, so I think he's at that level um, of mental toughness and mental strength. Um, but Patrick Mahomes, and if you go back and look at that Super Bowl, they had lost both of their offensive tackles. Their offensive line was decimated, and he ran around for four quarters for his life. And for he was life. still making amazing throws running around for his life. And receivers were dropping passes. They were dropping passes, yes. Fast forward to them playing now, you show up the offensive line, you get um, a former Raven, Orlando Brown, um, at left tackle. You go get a guard, you go get – you show up the offensive line and you give him some time and you see what happens. He can play special. Um, he's a very, very special talent. Very, very special. And uh, I just – He's going to keep throwing it, and if you give him a shot, he's going to make you right, you know. So, you know, Andy, Coach Andy Reid, who's going to be a Hall of Famer one day, um, he's he's going to have uh, Patrick Mahomes playing at a high level mm-hmm. for a long time, and he just needs time to throw. He needs time, and you just got to work to throw it because he can come up with some magic. Um, and that tight end they have, Kelsey, he's good. he's a good one too. So yeah, man, Kelsey's a monster, man. Yeah, he's a monster, and you know if you got to double cover him with a linebacker and a safety, somebody somewhere else is gonna get open, you know. So they they're gonna be okay. Um, I think the Baltimore Ravens are gonna have to see them down the road too. Yeah, I think a lot of people are gonna have to see Kansas City, man. I really do. Um, okay, so a couple of questions, man. A couple of rapid questions, a little bit. Uh, so Brady and and uh, Brady and uh, Rodgers, uh, did we see the last time that they will play, or do you think it's a chance we may get one more chance in the playoffs to get see those two greats play each other? It will have to be the playoffs. Um, I, I don't know if Tom Brady will come back because there's nothing else for back. him to prove. It's nothing, nothing else. for. I mean, he's assaulted the, the record books. He has – he's going to have more Super Bowl rings than he needs. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. and, and then when he retires, you got to add his Hall of Fame ring along with that. Um, he he has probably more rings than fingers, honestly, if, if you want to talk about the conference championship rings, the Super Bowl rings, his soon-to-be Hall of Fame ring, um, his bowl game rings from college. Mm-hmm. Like, he has more rings than he has fingers. So – he, I mean, he's done everything you could do, do in football. Um, and he has nothing else to prove. Right. Um, I I'll say this, and I know this is a quick, quick uh, moment right now. I've always had Peyton Manning as the greatest quarterback ever because of how I see the game as a football coach and how he executed at a level that he really had the chalk last um, when Peyton Manning played. But there's no doubt uh, in my mind, with all due respect to the great Hall of Famer Peyton Manning, that Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback to ever live. And it's hard for me to say that with a straight face. Yeah, I mean, hey, the thing about it is Brady has done enough to the point to where you just be like, man, I can't deny him. 
Uh, I do feel like no one prepared for the game better than Peyton Manning. And, you know, I know, like they said, Joe, Joe Montana was pretty good as well. But uh, being cerebral about the game, it, it definitely – it definitely I, I put Brady up there too because he won't be able to do some of the things if he doesn't know system, no, no football. But and, you know, hey. for the longest people said uh Tom Brady was a system quarterback because he was always with um the great Bill uh Belichick and New I England. never thought that. Um, but going to a whole new system, whole new uh culture and a whole new and took a team that didn't make the playoffs straight to the Super Bowl and won it. Right, right. I mean, there's nobody in the history of football, even the great uh, Joe Montano, who after winning four Super Bowls with San Francisco, he went to Kansas City and never won the Super Bowl again. Um, Payman Manning did it in Denver, but that was at the end, and that defense really was uh, pulling a lot of their weight. So, you know, yeah. Tom Brady's he, he's a different animal. Right, right. Well, I mean, hopefully we get to see Rodgers and Brady again. Uh, short, I mean, we can, it'd be great to see them one more time in the playoffs. But honestly, I feel like uh, it's definitely the end of the era. And we have to also get ready for the possibility that one of those teams may not even make the playoffs this season. Just we don't know how it's going to go. Yep. Four games down. And I mean, still a long season. Still a long season. So. You being a coach, mm -hmm. how will you handle the two or two alone situation? Um, especially at the high school level, we have a lot of protocols in place to make sure that we take care of the safety of the child and the safety of his future. Um, you're not allowed to get back on the football field or even practice until you have clear medical protocols. I have to have, and our coaching staff has to have, our head coach has to have um, medical clearance by your doctor, our team physician, um, before you can ever even practice. So it's a lot of, you know, hoops you got to jump through just to get back to practice. And I feel like the tool situation, it was, he was failed. Um, yeah. Somebody failed him somewhere. Because mm -hmm. as, as a professional athlete, and I've never played professionally, but I can only um, imagine the burn burning inside he has to just play the game and just be there with his teammates because he's the quarterback and he's the face of it, you know, and he has to be able to, you know, show toughness and show, you know, because you know, not a lot of the people have been high on tour um, okay. in the NFL. So he's hearing all this stuff. And his motivation, and oh, he's so small he can't take a hit, or oh, he doesn't do this right, or he doesn't do right this right, or whatever the criticism may be, he wants to show that he can be what they drafted him to be. You don't spend a first round draft pick on the quarterback and be wrong because it'll set you back years. No, yeah, so, definitely. You know, he had some criticisms about him, and um, it was said that people in the Dolphins organization really didn't believe in Tua. So yeah. and I for him to go they through failed him in that Bengals game. They, 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 they failed him. Four days with him. It, it, it failed him. And, you know, it was uh, said on one of the sports uh, things that they're suggesting that he never plays the game again. And, I did you know, hear something like that. I also, I, I, it was also a neuroscientist. He was saying that if the Dolphins cared about his future, he would not touch the field no more this season in order to let his brain give his brain time to heal and just just his body appear from that trauma. Yeah. So it's, this is a real serious situation, and of course, the NFLPA is definitely investigating it as well to see. Um, you know, if anything has to be done to the you know Dolphins franchise, and I think it about, should be. I think yeah, the Dolphins, yeah. I think the owner, and you know, I think we have to hold the standard of if you're going to talk it, you got to walk it, right? Because if it was Dolphins, a player, yeah, the Dolphins, the other side, they've they, yeah. they been already fined and all this stuff like that. So yes. we got to get y'all too. I understand. I think, you know, and I think the Dolphins are kind of a shady, um, non-trustworthy organization, and it starts with the owner. Um, the coach that they had previous was um, asked. 
Yeah, Brian to Flores. Lose, to lose football games to get paid for. Them. And then, you know, they were trying to get now this off this past offseason, I believe they were trying to remember they're trying to get Brady and Sean Payton to come down there too. And they got yeah, fined so. for it. Yeah. So, so you know, you know, like a lot of steady found stuff out that on. it was true. It's so a I mean, lot I, of I understand. I yeah, right. I understand yeah. trying to, you know, win with any. I mean, everybody's trying to win. So everybody's trying to do what they possibly can to get a leg up, get an advantage. They possibly can. Should you see what the Cleveland Browns did to get Deshaun Watson 230 guaranteed reasons? And you have other situations going around the NFL. People, people just want to win. But they yeah. want to win, but we have to, you know, winning at a cost. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 written somewhere great. What does it um profit a man? To gain everything, you lose yep. your soul. Yep. So, like, you can't lose the way you want to go about great business um, just for the win. The great uh, Bill Walsh, Hall of Famer, said, when it comes with a price, what you're willing to pay for? You know, if you're willing to get sell the form for the cow, you're going to lose a lot. You're right. You're absolutely you know, right. So- all right, coach. Um, you got like two minutes left. I want to go ahead and get your two early MVP vote. Who who would you be voting for MVP if you had to vote right now? Uh, it'll be Hurts, the quarterback for the Eagles. That's a good pick. Um, I like that pick. Um, and I'm gonna be biased and say Joe Flack, not Joe Flacco. Um, he because he got a Super Bowl MVP, but uh, my quarterback Lamar J- Jackson. Yeah. I think uh, for me, it's Lamar Jackson, just because I think he has a lot to prove. He This is a prove a year for him. He's going out there for the bag. He's definitely uh, putting up some historic numbers these first four games. And I expect, even though, you know, it'd be better if they was, you know, of course, wins, more wins, like a win, win over the Dolphins, win over the Bills. He really would definitely be front runner without no questions asked. You know, even over like Pat Mahomes, all the it would be nobody in front of him. But yeah, I'm going with Lamar Jackson. And then if I had to go with somebody else, I probably would go with honestly Pat Mahomes because just because he's able to spread the ball around and everything too. So we're gonna see what happens though, man. But I definitely appreciate you for coming on again. Uh great having you always, and we definitely plan on doing this again real soon. Thank you for having me. Uh, no problem at all, man. Until next time, why settle for less when you can have more with the vision? Be generational because it's always time to be A1 Forever Sports, the show that's cool and fly too. Chris Tipmore, Coach Mike. Until next time, we out. Uh, Holla. Cooler and I'm flying to jail.